In this video, I'll tell you about the horror stories of dropshippers using AliExpress. Then I'm going to share with you my story how I almost got banned from dropshipping because of bad suppliers. Then I'm going to teach you how to find a good supplier and finally how to fulfill orders. Hey, Avizu here. So first I wanna start off with a little bit of proof. So you guys know that everything I'm about to teach you guys is coming from my own personal experience. So as you guys can see, uh, I have almost 14,500 orders uh, since I started dropshipping. So what to expect from this video? First, I'm going to talk to you about the horror stories of other dropshippers using AliExpress and why AliExpress is bad. Uh, then I'm going to tell you my personal horror story with third party suppliers. Uh, then I'm going to tell you why you should get a supplier um, and how to find a good supplier and then finally how to fulfill orders with a supplier step by step. AliExpress horror stories. You know, there, there are people um, who have over 2000 orders and as you guys can see like 90 of them just weren't shipped out. Like the supplier from AliExpress just gave them a fake tracking just gave them fake tracking numbers right so this one at the top he was probably scammed for over 10 20 thousand dollars or even more so why you shouldn't be using aliexpress for drop shipping well because it's just more expensive because you pay for each product one by one instead of bulk ordering you know also um if you scale with aliexpress and you get a paypal hold uh, usually you'll just get a higher hold like higher percentage or they will hold more money from you because uh, PayPal will notice that you're an AliExpress dropshipper and they're more strict with them. So why you shouldn't be using AliExpress for dropshipping is also because of long processing times. Uh, AliExpress suppliers, you know, they are also dropshippers for other dropshippers. So that's why you know uh, they can have like five to ten day processing times, you know, which will co cost you a lot of disputes, refunds chargebacks you know and you'll also get a ton of emails from your customer asking about like where is their order and it will usually mean that you will have to spend hours uh, replying to your customers or you will have to hire more VAs. Another problem is they don't usually communicate with you like they don't respond to your messages they don't even message you right so that's also a problem because they don't tell you like how much how much in stock they have um, you know they don't tell you anything. Another big problem is that with AliExpress suppliers, you will have longer delivery times, which will cause lower Facebook customer feedback score. This is kind of like a new feature on Facebook. Um, and basically, you know, if you have low customer feedback score, Facebook can ban your Facebook page. Uh, also, they can lower your reach and make your Facebook ads more expensive. And this is something that happened to me personally. So I'm gonna talk about it in just a bit. Use AliExpress only if you're a beginner or if you use it to test just a few products, you know. Um, so I recommend if you're a beginner using the app DSers, which is just free. Um, you know, it's better than Oberlo or Dropify from what I heard, because it's just free, you don't have to pay anything for that. And once you get to like 30 orders or more per day, you should switch to a third party supplier, a dropshipping agent. Uh, that's usually like those aren't like on AliExpress. Usually, you know, as a dropshipper, you first start off um, as a, on AliExpress, then you then you get a third party supplier uh, or a dropshipping agent. And once you grow even more, you can also then move into like holding stock or private label and building a brand and things like that. So now let's talk about my personal horror story, how I almost got banned because of bad suppliers. So just a little bit of a like backstory. Um, I worked with this supplier already, you know, back in June 2018 when I scaled at the time to like 1 to 2k a day when I was still a newbie, when I was just starting out. In October 2018, as you guys can see, I basically scaled very fast from zero to like over $10,000 a day. When I scaled so fast, um, I thought everything's going to be fine because I already worked with that supplier for, you know, a couple of months and I never had any issue with him. And... So I thought, I thought like he's gonna ship in two to three days uh, as he promised. What really happened is like, you know, 10 to 14 days into scaling, I started to get lots of emails, like 50 to 100 emails per day. I started to get disputes, 
also during the same time, you know, um, I, also, I also got a PayPal hold and a rolling reserve on PayPal because I was using only PayPal. Um, the thing is like Stripe or Shopify payments is not available in my country. And with my VA, virtual assistant, um, basically we found out that we had around 15 to 20 day processing time. And what is processing time is basically, you know, from the day uh, you get the order to the day when the product ships out. So, you know, customers, let's say, you know, customers on the 1st of October, they would order. And, you know, what would happen is my supply would ship them out on the 15th or 20th. So nothing would be happening for like 15 to 20 days. The customers, they wouldn't get any email. They wouldn't get any tracking, right? And they start to wonder like, is this a scam? You know, like what is happening with my order? And they started like really emailing me a lot, 50 to 100, you know, per day or sometimes even more. So, you know, I, I knew like this supplier just, I can't work with him anymore. So in November, I started to work with a new third party supplier. And again, you know, they told me they would ship in two to three days, you know, once the products first arrive, uh, which, which would take around a week, you know, for them to get it from the factories to their warehouses, you know, and then, you know, once it's in their warehouse, they can ship it in two to three days. I thought everything's going to be fine, but this time I started checking on them more and we found out that again, we had 15 to 20 day processing times, you know, and when you have 15 to 20 day processing times, it means like nothing happens for 15 to 20 days. And then you ship it out with e packet, which takes another 15 to 20 days. So realistically, you know, my delivery times, uh, were around 30 to 35 days. During November, I started to notice that my ads just start, my Facebook ads just started to get very expensive. I, I was also getting, you know, 50 to 100 emails per day. And I had to, I had to hire four full-time VAs to, to just manage all those emails. And I was also getting PayPal disputes every single day. I got a notification and basically, you know, uh, Facebook just told me that they're just like lowering my reach, making my Facebook ads more expensive. And, you know, at the time, my customer feedback score was around 1.5. Basically, when you have the Facebook customer feedback score at one or below one, your Facebook page will be banned from advertising. What can do is they can also ban your domain. So your store domain. So let's say your name is trendystore.com, then trendystore.com, that domain will be banned from advertising on Facebook. 1.5 to one, you know, you're going to have a heavy ad penalization. And when you're at 1.5 to two, you have light ad penalization and above two, um, you don't really have like any penalization. You have just normal, normal reach. And as you guys can see, you know, I was at 1.5 and at the lowest, I got to 1.3 score. And right now I'm at 3.3.1. Just give you like an example of what really happens. You know, guys, these are my results from January. Uh, as you guys can see on January 21st, I got over uh, two, like the customer feedback score two. So I, I just got rid of the penalization. As you guys can see, it's in, in green. In 20 days, I made only $18,000. My add to cart conversion rate was only 5.7%. And once, once I got rid of the penalization, once I stop being penalized, it instantly just got to 10, 10 to 11%, you know, add to cart conversion rate, just like that. You know, I didn't change anything. It just like I got rid of the penalization. And, you know, in just 11 days, I made $120,000. The penalization makes a huge difference. You really want to avoid this at any cost. And also something uh, that's going to maybe look a little bit different or strange to you is the conversion rate on purchase. Uh, why it says only like 0 0.38 or 0 0.84 is because I'm using card hook. So that's why like the Shopify dashboard, it doesn't, it doesn't count uh, like all the orders. But you know, on the first screenshot on the left, you know, instead of 0.38% conversion rate, it was around 1.5, I think, uh, conversion rate. And then after the penalization was gone, my conversion rate was around 3 to 4% instead of 0.8%. For. When you have slow shipping time, you're gonna also get, you know, lots of chargebacks and then payment processors, they can ban you. Uh, you know, that's why I'm currently working with chargeback 911 to prevent and lower the number of chargebacks. And, and also another reason why I'm using BlueSnap as my payment card processor is that they are more drop shipping friendly. For more info about like BlueSnap and Chargeback 911, uh, just go to my resource page, you know, the, it, the link is in the description. As a beginner dropshipper, you first start with AliExpress. Once you scale and you go to intermediate level, 
um, you basically start using a third party supplier or they're also called a dropshipping agent. And once you go into like advanced level, you can either still use like the third party supplier or you can move into holding stock, private labeling and stuff like that, you know. So even though I had like bad experience with some third party suppliers, you still need to use them if you want to go to intermediate and advanced level. You still need to use them, you know, in most of the cases. So next up, I'm going to talk about the benefits of those third party suppliers, how to find a good, reliable supplier and how to fulfill orders. So the benefits of third party suppliers is you will get cheaper prices, which will increase your profit margins. Another really good benefit is faster processing times. You know, they know how many orders you're getting so they can prepare stock in advance and ship, ship, ship out products within like one to three days. Also, another thing is you can have faster delivery times, you know, because they can use um, a shipping method called SF Express, which usually, um, which usually, you know, takes around seven, seven to 10 days for goods to arrive. Or some also offer like DHL and other shipping methods, which are even faster. So another really good benefit is they let you pay, pay them after three to seven days. So let's say they ship out the products now, but you pay them after like three to seven days. And you know, uh, this helps you with your cash flow uh, because you, usually like when you have Stripe or Blue Snap, it usually takes a few or several days to get your payout, to get your money from your payment processor, from your merchant account back to your bank account. So that's why, you know, those suppliers, uh, if you have a good supplier and you have a good relationship, uh, you know, they can, they can let you pay them after seven days. If you have a good relationship with your supplier, they can give you winners by telling you what is currently trending, what is a hot product. Some of my friends, um, you know, they asked their suppliers and they made over $1 million just from supplier recommended products. So this is a really good way uh, for product research. And also another big benefit is that fulfilling orders can be very quick using CSV files. That can take you maybe like three minutes per day. Or some of the suppliers, third party suppliers, uh, they use an ERP app, uh, which is basically installed on your Shopify store. And basically like everything is done automatically. So you don't even have to worry about it. Another big benefit is that you get custom packaging with your logo and your thank you note. There are also a few drawbacks that I wanna talk about. You guys know me. I always like to talk about the benefits and also the drawbacks, the ups and downs, right? So the drawbacks of third party suppliers is that you need at least 30 orders per day or more for them to work with you. Another kind of drawback is that you need to pay with wire transfers or Payoneer with most suppliers. Unfortunately, like most of them, they don't accept PayPal or credit card. So basically you're not, you're not protected. So you, you need to be a little bit careful. You really need to find like, this is crucial. You really need to find a good supplier. Otherwise you might run into the same issues like me with the slow shipping time. So how to find a supplier? The first method is that you go to big drop shipping or Shopify or e-commerce Facebook groups with like 10,000 or more members, or you can even join my Facebook group and just go there and search supplier or agent or sourcing. And then you'll find like the Facebook pro, then you find the post and just look for those with Chinese names, you know, because 99 of these suppliers are Chinese. So just message them, tell them how many orders per day you have and that you would like to work with them. Uh, I'm also going to provide a template on what to what to write them uh, just in the description as well. Also, another method is you can post in those Facebook groups that you're looking for a supplier. Just write down like how many daily orders you have for them to notice you basically. And the last method, the third method is as someone who's at six figures or seven figures or more, um, if they can recommend you a supplier. Uh, this method sometimes works and sometimes doesn't because sometimes you get a reply, sometimes mm, you don't because these people are very, very busy. How do you like actually find a good supplier? Well, unfortunately, you know, it is very hard to know who is a good supplier before working with them. You know, this is something that nobody talks about. Almost all of these suppliers, you know, uh, have people who recommend them, who love them. Also, they have people who hate them and who had very bad experience with them. Usually, like their top clients that get the best service, fastest shipping, you know, like they they give them the best service. And with the smaller clients, like they have less time, like they don't, they don't take care of them as well. So they usually have a bad experience. Uh, what happens is that these suppliers, you know, they, they get greedy and they usually take on too many clients. And uh, once that happens, they have too many clients, 
um, you know, they start to ship slower, they start to make mistakes, uh, everything starts to get slower. So you really need to be also careful. In my personal case is that some suppliers are good at low volume. Before when I was at like one or 2K, $2,000 per day in revenue, it was still fine. But once I got to high volume, I got to like 10,000, $12,000 in revenue per day. Then, you know, they start to make mistakes, uh, ship slow. And, you know, that's when things just start to break down. My best tip, look for some suppliers, talk to, talk to like, let's say like three or five of them. You know, once you find someone that you like, uh, once you start working with them, make sure to check on their tracking numbers and tracking links, you know, the tracking numbers every two to three days and see if they're working. Check if the supplier is shipping out products on time as they promised. So really look at that if they are fulfilling their promises. This is a really big telltale. Another good sign of good supplier is they are very responsive to your messages and they're very helpful. That's also a good sign. Uh, a bad sign is when they start responding to you late in like one or two days, you know, uh, like in a long time. That's a bad sign. So Ivy, can you recommend me a supplier? Well, the only supplier who I haven't heard a negative review is Alan Kuglan. So he's, I think he's from UK, right? But he's uh, like, he's originally from UK, but he has a company in China and he ships from China. Message him only if you have 50 plus orders per day and tell him Ibizu gave you his contact info. Just don't worry about like these links. Uh, you know, this, uh, this presentation PDF file with all the links uh, will be in my Facebook group. So just join there and just down download this PDF. So don't worry about that. How do you actually fulfill orders with a supplier with CSV files? So step number one is go to your Shopify dashboard and go to your order section. And there click on the order, uh, click on the export, right? And there you choose the orders by date. You know, choose the dates that you wanna export and click on export. And this is gonna be exporting uh, a, a CSV file which you can later send to your uh, supplier. If you're worried about privacy or about some information, what you can do is you can download Exportify app which is I think a paid app. So this is also another way. And step number two is send, send it to your supplier, that CSV file. If he has the goods ready in his warehouse, usually he will ship it out and send you the tracking within one to three days. If he hasn't, uh, it usually takes around five to seven days for him to buy the goods from the Chinese factories back to his warehouse. You know, so it will usually take five to seven days for him to get the goods to his warehouse and then you know he'll start packaging and you know ship, shipping it out within like one to three days. So then he should send you like an Excel file with um, the tracking info. So the tracking CSV file or Excel file, uh, the, these should have columns uh, that are absolutely necessary, which is the order number, the tracking number, and the name of the carrier, which can be like China EMS, you know, um, or SF Express you know, e-packet and stuff like that. If he sends you a CSV file, make sure to use the text to columns feature uh, to turn your CSV file into an Excel file um, because you need the Excel file so you can put it into the Mass Fulfill app, which is step number three. Uh, get the Mass Fulfill Shopify app, which is a free app. Uh, then click on Fulfill Orders uh, in that app. Um, just upload, you know, upload the Excel file. And once you upload the Excel file, you know, then they will, then you should make sure in step six is that Mass Fulfill recognizes all the correct columns. So the order number columns should be the order number, the tracking number should be the tracking number and carrier should be the tracking carrier column so that it recognizes correctly. Because sometimes what happens is Mass Fulfill will, will do like the, the order number and it will actually take the column from the tracking number, which will just mess up the fulfillment. So we really need to make sure that everything just matches up. Step number seven, which is optional, but I highly recommend this step seven, is download reconvert Shopify app. This app allows you to add a track order button on your thank you page so people can easily track their order with one click because they usually get an email, right? And they click on, you know, uh, they click on their order and this will lead them to your, to your thank you page. And then once they got to your thank you page, they're going to see the tracking number. And, you know, as you can see in, in the screenshot is, there's a track button and they just click it and you know they instantly see all the tracking info just there so it makes it very easy and because you will have this button you will get less you'll get less emails of customers asking like where is my order and stuff like that so this is a really good way you know this is a really good way 
uh, how you can reduce the amount of emails that you get. Reconvert app also allows you to do post-purchase upsells on the thank you page and surveys and it has a ton of features. So I highly recommend this app. Um, there is a 60 day free trial link. Um, you know, uh, link is just in the description. Some closing thoughts is that finding a winner and scaling is the easy part. I know a lot of people who are at six figures and seven figures, finding a winner and scaling, it seems like it's the easiest part, you know? And the hard part is like, how do you scale without making big mistakes that can get you banned or mess, thing, mess everything up? Because I know a lot of dropshippers and when they first scale their store, they just made a ton of mistakes, you know, and a lot of people almost got banned because they made the mistakes, um, you know, because like nobody talks about these things. Nobody talks about the mistakes, um, you know, that I talk about on my channel because like most gurus, they teach you only how to scale, but and how to like find a winner and how to scale the winner, but they don't really teach you, you know, what to do next, how to secure a business how to make your business last long term, you know, how to not get banned. So dropshipping, you know, isn't just product research, finding winners and Facebook ads, it, which is the only thing that gurus teach, you know. Dropshipping is a real business where you need to learn lots of skills that just aren't being taught in courses. That's why me and three other dropshippers, which are at six and seven figures, um, we are currently working on an exclusive group coaching program. Uh, just a quick disclaimer is that this group coaching program isn't for everybody. It's only for serious people who want who want to build a real five, six, seven, or even more uh, figure dropshipping or e-commerce business. We're still currently working on it, um, but once it's gonna be ready in probably like one to two weeks, uh, I'm gonna announce it in my Facebook group, you know, on my Instagram, and also on my YouTube. So just stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash the like button, the subscribe button, and turn on post notification so you don't miss out on any of these value videos. Also, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below and ask me a question or just simply comment hashtag Ivy League to let me know that you enjoy this video. And also, uh, if you have any friends who are interested into e-commerce and dropshipping, uh, make sure to send them a link. Uh, I think there is, they're going to find this video pretty helpful. They're going to learn like what to avoid, you know, what mistakes to avoid. Also, they're going to learn how to find a good supplier, you know, and also how to fill orders. So make sure to share this video with your friends. And also, uh, if you want, you can also check out some of my older videos. Uh, basically, you guys can see my journey, how I went from zero to $1,000 a day uh, in my first month. And then later on, you know, how I scaled uh, to 10,000 and even more per day. Uh, so guys, check out my older videos. And also, you know, my last five videos, uh, my last five videos are value, value packed very value packed so check those out as well if you want to learn uh, how to do dropshipping properly uh, properly in 2019.